Now let's start with the uh, course. So the <coughs> as the name suggests, the as the name of the course is your biomedical signal processing. Okay. हो गया तो ये तो दिखा रहा है। So is biomedical signal processing, okay? So what is biomedical? So if you see, it is having two words, three words, biomedical signal processing. When we talk about biomedical, so we are basically dealing with the biological signals which are being generated from the human body, okay? <coughs> so, what are the different types of signals which are being generated? The most common signals are ECG, we have heard, it is associated with the cardiac system, EEG, which is electroencephalogram, which are also regarded as the brain waves or the brain signals. Then we have EMG, which are uh, the signals from the muscles. Then we have uh, EOG. So these are the signals which are being generated by the movement of the eye. So eye is considered as a dipole. Okay. So you, as and uh, you must be knowing as you move the dipole, there will be a change in the electrical activity if you are placing the electrodes uh, at a fixed point. Okay. So then apart from that, uh, we have ENG electron neurogram okay then you have EGG electrogastrogram we have speech signals okay while we talk the signals which are being generated they are in the speech signals okay so there are a lot of signals which are being generated by our body okay now when I talk about signal what is a signal we need to understand that what is a signal anyone yeah, the signal is basically a variable which changes with respect to time. Okay, with respect to independent variable, uh, here in most of the cases for biomedical signals, the independent variable is the time. So, as the time progresses, the independent variable it would change. So, in case of the ECG, EEG, EMG. EOG, what is varying? The electrical potential is varying. Okay. So, in case of the speech signals, what is varying? The sound which are being generated from our uh, mouth, it is going to the sensor and that is varying. Okay. So, any parameters, variable parameters which are being generated from the body and it is varying with respect to the time it is regarded as the biomedical signals okay now coming to the processing what do you mean by processing what is meant by processing so i will give a give you a very basic example uh, we have a tomato okay and we process it to get ketchup Okay, so this is an example of food processing. So, what what is the raw material? We start with some raw materials, and then we are developing a product which is a finished product, and it is ready to use. Now, when we are talking about the biomedical signal processing, what is it over here? The raw product, if you see, these are basically these signals. Okay, we are talking about the biomedical signal processing. So, the raw product is the biomedical signals, whatever the signals I have just talked about you and then <coughs> you process it in by employing various algorithms. What do you do in the algorithms? 
you basically apply some addition subtraction averaging multiplications okay whatever you want to do you do it so any mathematical operation you can do it and by employing the mathematical operation you derive a product or derive any specific information from that product which will be helpful for the health diagnosis okay say for example if a person a person is uh, having a bradycardia or tachycardia how do you know what is bradycardia slowing of the heart rate what is uh, tachycardia increase in the heart rate right so what happens over there so you will get the ecg signal now from the ecg signal you have to apply various mathematical operations over there to get the heart rate and once you get the heart rate by analyzing the heart rate which is basically the information you will be able to tell whether the person is suffering from bradycardia or tachycardia or his heart condition is normal so likewise when we talk about electro uh, myogram if someone is suffering from degenerative uh, diseases of the muscles then slowly the intensity of the muscles uh, ampli- uh, this electrical signals emg signals they will be reducing okay now due to this reason what will happen you will be able to tell yeah this person is suffering from muscular degenerative diseases okay so likewise <laughs> you get the signals raw signals from the body you process it and you get to an information which will help you in the diagnosis of a disease condition so this mathematical operations what you perform on the raw biological signals or the biomedical signals it is regarded as the process biometers it is regarded as the biomedical signal processing okay another important aspect of the biomedical uh, signal processing is that <coughs> you talk about this rehabilitative devices okay say for example someone is sitting on a wheelchair now he wants to manipulate the wheelchair how to do that there are three ways of doing that first one is a family member or a healthcare giver they are manipulating the wheelchair the second is the patient himself or herself is doing the manipulation the third one is <coughs> you have the electrically powered wheelchair which can be used to manipulate okay now there are certain conditions say uh, a person is paraplegic that means all the four limbs both hands and both legs are not working so how will we use the joystick it is not possible for him so, so yeah who will do it you will need another caregiver so if a caregiver is just uh, putting this remote control over there so again you have to spend money on the caregiver right yeah, yeah. so many in many cases it is not possible so what nowadays are uh, people are doing researchers are doing <coughs> they are using biological signals say for example the eog signals and all these things to and then they are processing the signal and from there they are putting some logic it may be an artificial intelligence based logic it may be a normal control logic they are using some logic to generate some control signals which will help you to manipulate the wheelchair within a given environment okay so you can see how biomedical signal processing it can affect a the lifestyle of a given person so it is not only the biomedical signal processing it is not only meant for the diagnosis of the disease but it is also meant for controlling the rehabilitation devices so its scope is very wide okay so that's why we need to un- uh, study the biomedical signal processing uh, techniques okay <coughs> so i will come to the course content so in the course content we have this introduction to signals and systems because i don't know your background i believe that uh, some of you may be from electronics some of you may be from electricals some of you may be uh, computer science some may be you know, from pharmacy from some may be from biotechnology so people from various background they come to my class so it becomes very customary to uh, give an introduction to uh, them about the signals and systems because if they don't understand this they will not be able to appreciate 
uh, what is biomedical signal processing okay so we will start with the introduction to signals and systems then we will go towards the introduction to the transforms so over here uh, if you see we will be discussing about the fourier series fourier transform discrete fourier uh, discrete time fourier series discrete time fourier transform discrete fourier transform laplace transform and z transform okay <coughs> among all of these we are uh, we will mainly be interested in the discrete fourier transform okay discrete fourier transform and then the z transform okay the rest of the things we will just cover what the these fourier series fourier transform they says what is the physical meaning of uh, this, uh, this transform we will just discuss and then we will be finally discussing about the discrete fourier transform and z transform can anyone tell me why this is so this is because when we talk about <laughs> z transform and the discrete fourier transform they are contemporary to each other what do you mean by contemporary uh, no nothing like that contemporary means uh, like over here see discrete fourier transform it is mainly used for the analysis of the signals and systems in the analog domain or the continuous time domain whereas the z transform it is mainly used for the analysis of the digital signals and systems okay so <coughs> uh, then you would say why not say uh, fourier transform why discrete fourier uh, fourier transform this is because when i talk about the discrete fourier transform discrete fourier transform is a discrete time uh, uh, discrete time uh, transform similarly z transform is also a discrete time uh, transform okay the only difference is that uh, discrete fourier transform is for the analog signals and the contemporary is the z transform is uh, helpful for the analysis of the digital signals and systems okay so we can uh, what you do uh, what we can do is that we can correlate the z transform uh, we will see that it has it is basically a transform which has been derived from the discrete fourier transform okay and which helps us to analyze the signals and systems which have been developed in the uh, what are you calling the analog domain or the uh, analog domain and then convert it into the digital domain very easily through the z transform and then analyze the same system in the digital domain so <coughs> uh, what is happening over here is that this discrete fourier transform it is helping us in designing the signal uh, in designing the systems in the analog domain which was or uh, analog domain which have been practiced for a very long long time okay and our knowledge in that domain is quite big okay so once we understand the conditions how the systems are being developed in the analog uh, domain then converting them into the digital domain it becomes quite easy okay so we will be mainly concentrating on the discrete fourier transform and the z transform okay and <clears throat> we will also discuss something uh, uh, some information about the laplace transform also then coming to the uh, next topic basics of digital filtering <coughs> so from the previous section as we entered into the z transform we are basically entering into the digital domain now when we talk about the systems what are the systems systems are nothing but the digital filters what we design okay so we'll be uh, discussing about the basics of the digital filters uh, over there you will see that uh, there are two parameters which are regarded as the poles and the zeros <coughs> so by placing the poles and the zeros we will be able to make a specific type of filter so we will be looking into that in a non mathematical way how we can design the filters okay once we appreciate that how the placement of the poles and zeros they help us in developing a system then we will move forward towards the mathematical components where we will first start with the iir filter design 
we will be talking about the different methods then we will be discussing about the fir filter designing method which is another type of uh, the digital filter uh, filter systems then we will go for the signal modeling which are basically used for time series forecasting so we are uh, we will be discussing about ar ma prma and arima models over here then lastly we will be discussing about the time frequency analysis systems these are the most advanced type of uh, signal processing techniques here we will be discussing about the stft heisenberg gaber in quality the wigner wille distribution uh, wavelet transform and wavelet packet distributions okay so what are the mechanics over there and how they perform so thereafter we will be discussing about the dsp hardware so over here we will be discussing about the microprocessor architectures 8085 and 8086 and overview of programming okay then lastly we will be discussing about some applications of the ecg signal processing hrv analysis eug signal processing eeg signal processing emg signal processing etc will be basically will be taking up some examples okay so books which can be uh, referred a uh, digital signal processing principles and algorithms uh, principles algorithms and uh, applications by ruakis then discrete time signal processing uh, processing by openham digital signal processing by tarun kumar rawat biomedical digital uh, signal processing by willis j tomkins uh, you may consider this as one of the best uh, biomedical digital signal processing books okay so then we will be talking about this uh, conceptual wavelets in digital signal processing by d lee fugel so it is another book uh, which gives you a very uh, uh, crisp and uh, crisp uh, concept about the wavelets in a very lucid manner okay so you will be able to understand how the wavelet filters they uh, work or what is the mechanism of their functioning if you go through this book uh, d leaf fugal okay now lastly comes the evaluation and uh, most of you are interested in your uh, grades okay so how the evaluation will be done uh, so we there are three components in uh, nit about the evaluation aspect so the first one is the mid semester marks which is basically the 30 marks component it will be held centrally mid semester examination end semester examination it will be of 50 marks okay then we would be having teachers evaluation so in the teachers evaluation there would be four to, uh, components first one is the class test which would be of five marks okay so <clears throat> usually i take four class tests and i usually take uh, best two marks however i don't know uh, how many class tests i will be able to take but rest be assured at least three class tests will be conducted so out of three i will be taking the best two so one will be in the next month then the second class test would be in the month of october and the third one it will be in the month of november so in between if possible i am telling if possible i will try to squeeze in another class test more so that you get the benefit of attending four classes and out of that uh, uh, whatever the two best marks would be achieved by you it would be considered for the team <coughs> then assignments every week assignments will be given and you have to return the assignments every friday you will be given the assignment and you have to return the assignments by wednesday 5 pm to your ta okay then next one is the class notebook randomly we will pick up the copies on any day at the end of the class so you have to submit the copies and we will see whether your copies the class notebooks are up to date or not okay and lastly flip class so all of you will be given with some topics uh, from this uh, uh, the topic uh, which we will be teaching or discussing and you will be you have to discuss about that topic in the class okay so um, since there is a dearth of classes the clusters will be taken on saturdays okay 
so that I can uh, save three classes uh, for teaching purpose. Okay. So thank you for now, but uh, don't go. We will start the next topic. Basically. The next uh, topic is your signals and systems. So, signal <coughs> we have already discussed. It is basically a set of information which varies with respect to time. Then, <coughs> coming to the signal processing, we have already discussed that. Uh, when we perform some algorithmic operations onto a signal to get some meaningful information which is hidden within the signal the process is called this series of algorithmic uh, algorithmic operations it is regarded as the signal processing so the signal processing can be of two types analog signal processing or digital signal processing so in the analog signal processing you would be having electronic circuits which are made up of rlc and uh, other components like uh, uh, you have the op amps, uh, transistors, active uh, active electrical, electronic components, they would be there. Okay. So, <clears throat> what happens over there? You give an input signal and you get a process output, uh, which is say, say for example, if there are noises, uh, so you can remove the noise using a uh, low pass filter or high pass filter or whatever uh, you can say. Okay. So, if you are using <coughs> the this RLC circuits then this kind of processing it is regarded as the analog signal processing then <coughs> coming to the uh, digital signal processing if we use digital circuits uh, which are basically some algorithms and uh, they are being implemented through microprocessors and microcontrollers then the processing it is regarded as the digital uh, signal processing and we prefer digital signal processing why this is because these digital circuits they are less sensitive to changes in the component values okay temperature effect it will be having a minimum one it is less sensitive to aging and other external parameters so what do you mean by the component values so when you are developing any rlc circuits say for example you are developing a filter you say uh, you need uh, one kilo ohm resistance to make the filter. Okay. Now, when you have that resistance, is the is that resistance actually a one kilo ohm resistance? No. It may be either one point one. It may be zero point nine uh, kilo ohms. Okay. So when you are talking about this, you are deviating from the idealistic conditions. How? When you are talking about the digital filters, these are just numbers. You put that this is the function which has to be done and due to this reason the digital filters and systems they are more accurate as compared to the analog processing units hence they are preferred then the temperature what happens as the temperature rises or falls there would be a change in the resistance values there would be a change in the capacitance values so that would affect your results whereas digital circuits they are not prone to such kind of variations aging what happens if you keep a resistance for um, say five years what will happen sometimes you will see, see that they have become more brittle so when they have become brittle what does that mean that means the material property has changed and since the material property has changed your resistance must have changed okay then other parameters today see it is quite humid tomorrow it may be completely dry so all these parameters they may alter the analog circuits okay electronic circuits whereas when we talk about these digital circuits these are just mathematical operations you just have to do the mathematical operations 
and because of that they do uh, the processing what you will be getting it will be quite minimal now what are the advantages as i told you flexibility in reconfiguration of the uh, dsp again uh, suppose you are de designing a, uh, a processing system as i told you these are algorithmic operations that means you are doing a series of operations say for example first addition then subtraction then multiplication then this thing now say on the next day you want to implement another project where would be addition multiplication subtraction division so you are changing the order in the case of analog uh, systems what you have to do you have to change the whole circuit but here in you just have to move the coded lines from bottom to top and reshuffle the codes and arrange it in a specific series what way you want so you can implement it within a week of a time right so <laughs> this digital signal processing systems they provide us flexibility in reconfiguration of the system and you can implement the several things in a proper way secondly it is accurate why accurate uh, we just discussed then storage of uh, the signals is quite easy we currently have thumb drives we currently have this uh, hard disk okay where you can uh, store tbs of data okay now two tb the hard drives are already here then three tbs will be there uh, i think three tb or uh, hard disk has also come in the market okay so we can store the data in a much more convenient way however if you want to store the this uh, analog signals then you have to make a system which are made up of a large number of uh, capacitors okay and it would become inconvenient and costly to develop that kind of system and also capacitors they are not leak proof there will be leakage of the information so you will be losing data over there so that is another important uh, parameter disadvantage of the analog processing system and lastly cost effective <coughs> ask a date me if you see uh, 32 gb pen drive is it comes at a price of 300 rupees or 400 rupees okay whereas if you want to make a analog storage device you would need a lot of things and again there will be the other variations which we discussed uh, just now now <coughs> coming to the digital signal processing so does that mean that we do not need analog signal processing units altogether that is not the case the because <coughs> whatever the system you can see before the data is being transferred into the digital systems whether it is a microprocessor or the microcontroller so what happens you need a small analog processing unit okay now why do you need it you need it because in our body if you see most of the signals what are being generated they are in the ionic form because ions are moving so the potentials which are being generated those are ionic potentials but in uh, electronic circuits they are ele uh, this electronic currents or electronic potentials okay so we need transducers which converts the ionic potentials into the uh, yeah, uh, electronic potentials okay now <coughs> after that we need this anti aliasing filter which will help in the band limiting of the signals why it is important we will come at a later stage in the second stage as we have this analog to digital converter so what happens digital signals they have a specific bandwidth they have a specific bandwidth okay now since they are having a specific bandwidth what happens is that uh, you can do many things but analog signals they have frequency components starting from minus infinity to infinity 
I hope all of you know about the Fourier series and the Fourier transform. What does that say? Especially the Fourier transform. Any signal, whether periodic or aperiodic, Fourier series is for the uh, periodic signals. Whereas Fourier transform is for both periodic and aperiodic signals. Okay. Now, any signals, they are constituted of infinite number of sinusoids having different amplitudes and frequencies. Okay. So, what is the bandwidth of the uh, analog signals then? It starts from minus infinity to plus infinity. But digital system they cannot handle infinity. Okay. So, we have to pre-process the signal and band limit the signals such that the analog digital converter and then the digital processing units they are able to handle the data they are able to handle the data so then you can uh, do all the uh, what you call if you want to store or whatever you want to do however if you want to get an analog output then what we need to do we after the processing we need to convert the signal from digital to analog converter okay now when we are talking about the digital to analog converter what, uh, what is happening we are converting the signal into the digital domain okay but in the digital domain what is happening uh, in this analog domain we are having one data over here one data over here one data over here say another data over here so you are getting the discrete time signals they are also analog signals right so you are getting discrete signals but the we are not getting the continuous time signals so what you will get if you try to take a printout or display it you will be getting something like this right staircase like uh, signals but we don't want that we want it in a continuous uh, time format so we need to have this reconstruction filter which will convert this kind of signal into a continuous time signal okay so you said that when very good question you tell me you tell me what is your background biomedical okay so I talked about Fourier series, it can handle only periodic signals. Fourier transform, it can handle both periodic and aperiodic signals. So if you, <coughs> so what you do, when you design a filter, so what happens? You have a signal like this, you perform the Fourier transform, what should be in the x-axis, y-axis? If you Fourier transform. This would be your amplitude and this would be y time. You have applied Fourier transform, it is frequency. So you will be getting some this thing like this. So now what is anti-aliasing filter? It is nothing but a low pass filter. It will help you to band limit the signals. So you just select a FC, you restrict the bandwidth, then you put it into the analog to digital converter. Okay. Now again, when we talk about uh, this staircase, this thing, see how to convert it? Reconstruction filter. It is again a low pass filter. So when you apply a low pass filter, again, which is now acting as a uh, this <coughs> uh, reconstruction filter. So what it do? It would try to smoothen out this data and by smoothing uh, smoothing out it will be generating a continuous time signal okay so it is not like that the that analog signal processing technique it's totally waste we need analog signal processing technique so that we can uh, pre-process the signals 
and condition the signal such that it becomes eligible to be digitized and subsequently processed using the digital signal processing unit okay the thing is that if you do not band limit the signal and condition the signal over there then even if you take the signal into the digital processing unit it will not be able to process the signal properly so all of you must have heard the word aliasing okay so if during the uh, analog to digital conversion there is aliasing of the signal then what will happen is that whatever the processing you do all the processing would be a crap you cannot extract meaningful information from an alias signal because the signal information has changed okay again <clears throat> if in the analog signal if your signal is totally saturated okay say for example you are working uh, with a uh, plus minus 10 volt uh, uh, power supply and you are having an op amp which is basically an amplifier right so what is the saturation level saturation level is would be minus 8 to plus 8 usually okay now when this is the case if you are processing any signal which is having amplitude of say 10 volt what will happen that 10 volt will be clamped to plus 8 volt similarly if there are something uh, which is uh, some voltage values lower than minus 8 volt they will be clamped to minus 8 volt there may be some offsets uh, here and there okay so when you are taking those saturated signals which are already saturated and you are putting the signal into the digital signal processing after the digitization what will happen again you have already lost some information those information cannot be recovered back. okay so these are the things which you, as a as an engineer you need to take care before you are digitizing any given signal you have to be very careful here i have given a, an example of plus minus 10 volt in many of the computer this uh, uh, microprocessors they work in the range of plus minus uh, 5 volt okay so in that case you have to be pretty sure that whatever is the working limit whether it is 4.5 volt plus minus 4.5 volt or plus minus 4 volt you have to work within that if your amplitude values exceeds that value then there will be uh, clipping of the thing so there will be saturation and your signal information will be lost okay <coughs> now comparison between analog signal processing and this thing digital signal processing so analog signal processing they are relatively fast then digital signal processing they have a moderate uh, processing speed and it uh, again depends on the processor to processor okay then cost is low to inter, uh, moderate a digital signal processing it is moderate flexibility low to moderate it is very high performance is uh, moderate it is high self calibration uh, analog signal processing we do not have uh, but we can uh, do the self calibration using the digital processing system then data logging capability Uh, we do not have in the analog signal processing, but in digital signal processing we have adaptive capability. Analog signal processing may have, but it is uh, quite limited. Whereas in digital signal processing, uh, we can improve the adaptive capabilities quite easily. Now, uh, applications of DSP. The I would first start with the space. So, with the successful event of this, uh, the landing of the. Lander in the Chandrayaan 3 uh, uh, module. So I hope everyone of you know how digital signal processing it helps. Then in businesses, uh, if you want to track uh, the information, so uh, of the share market and all these things, or if you want to uh, go uh, into the analyze your own business output, then DSP can help you out. By analyzing um, uh, by the yeah, time series forecasting method, okay. Then in science, say you want to manufacture something, okay. So 
the process parameters can be controlled. Say, for example, uh, we are talking about uh, synthesis of the penicillin. Okay, so penicillins they are being uh, synthesized using yeah using bioreactors. So in the bioreactors, you have various process parameters which needs to be controlled. So what should be the raw material input? What should be the pH of the broth? What should be the temperature of the broth? So there are many things which needs to be controlled. Again, these digital signal, signal processing units, they can help you in generating an optimized output of the penicillin. Okay. Then in industry, you would be very interested to, to know that the use of AI in industry in India was first implemented by uh, Asian paints. Okay, so their distribution of the uh, paints is totally automated. Okay, so they do not have distributor; they have the retailer. So directly from the company, they send the uh, paints to the retailer, and retailer they don't. Uh, what do you call? They do not order which paints they want to procure. The company itself, they send it to them. How do they do that? Because Asian Paints was the first industry in India to uh, set up a supercomputer in their industry in India. Even at that time, IITs were not having the supercomputers. Okay? So they implemented that and since that day, they are having a lot and lot of data and due to that reason what they are doing is that they are uh, enabling this time series forecasting in this thing and they are speculating at which retail outlet you how much paint and which paint is required okay and in this way they have removed all the distributors from the midline so what has happened distributors they also take some uh, yeah their profit right that has been removed and this is why you will find the asian paints uh, paints they are quite cheaper as compared to the other in the market and they, due to this reason asian paints today in the holds 70 to 80 percent of the market share of the paints in india so why are the other paint companies not implementing because they have distributors and all these things. So again, uh, if you want to, the system is already out. Everyone knows about it. Why are they not copying? I to I totally agree. But uh, there is another factor. As I as I told you, seventy to eighty percent of the market share is a huge share. Yeah. <laughs> they already okay. own it. So yeah. So there is a profitability in, uh, uh, aspect, uh, which uh, which is regarded as this. Uh, uh, production scaling factor. So, if you produce in a large quantity, then your price automatically comes down. Plus, they are having the data from say the 1960s or 70s. Okay, so their algorithms are quite strong. Plus, their retailer outlet, they are into the uh, their retail outlets are much more. Uh, a higher in number as compared to the other outlets. If the other paint industry they have to open up the outlets, then again they have to invest money. They have to getting the other customers who will be able or uh, customers the sellers will be interested to sell their products. Right? So it, it requires a whole lot of money. So due to the scalability factor, due to the number of uh, large number of outlets the which are already present they don't have to now work on the what you call setting up of the distribution network they already have the distribution network and directly from the factory to the retailers okay so <coughs> because if you talk about in the retailer he might be working with a 5 lakhs or 10 lakhs capital but a distributor he works with at least uh, 50 lakhs, 1 crore capital because he stores, he is a stockist, right? So, all these things they have been able to uh, eliminate due to this thing, right? Then, uh, then comes our military. 
So in military, if you talk about the night vision cameras, then uh, our uh, how to target uh, the enemy tank or all these things. Everything is uh, digital signal. To them. There would be chip, which will become uh, continuously doing the uh, processing, and uh, they will give us the required uh, results. Then coming to the communication, mobiles, Skype, whatever you talk, it is there. Then in medicine, <coughs> we one classic example I will give: computer aided diagnosis. We call it uh, in short CAT. So. The CAT can help you in early diagnosis of the diseases if you uh, do it through the, uh, by analyzing analyzing the data. And for that, you need the digital signal processing. Okay. So today I will stop here. If you have any questions, we can discuss. Okay, then.